after the individual breath into the breathalyzer, the species from his mouth, including the uh, viruses, attach to devices on this chip. We close the capsule that contains the chip and then we transfer it to uh, the spectrometer. And then we scan it for about 20 seconds and then we have about two seconds of mathematical processing and eventually we can say whether we have a corona carriers or we don't have a corona carriers. This uh, invention will be uh, fulfilled at point of entries, namely airports, cruise ships, uh, companies. So uh, we are going to position in those point of entries uh, many, many machines. Uh, each machine will have a throughput of about 4,000 people a day. We believe that uh, we will uh, do the validation within a few weeks from now and then we have to go through the FDA process. Uh, luckily, uh, there is now a fast track of the F FDA, so I hope that it will go within another month and hopefully by September or October we will start uh, to, to make uh, systems. Uh, since Israel uh, is uh, called the startup nation, and the reason for that is uh, because we can find uh, the power uh, on a, sometimes on a voluntary basis to gather forces uh, of so many people that we know each other and we have so good networking and the country is not that big, so we can join forces in order to eventually come up with the solution and to validate the solution in a very, very short time. Gabi, thank you so much for joining us uh, from uh, Ben Gurion University in the Negev, and I'm joined by David Burson, uh, a friend and a colleague here in Vancouver that helps and is the representative of Ben Gurion University of the Negev here uh, in Vancouver. Um, I want to call you professor, but you asked me to call you Gabi, and so I will. Um, we have been reading with great fascination about this breath test that you've developed, this rapid breath test uh, for COVID-19 for the coronavirus. Can you tell us what the test is and how you developed it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not coming from the clinical arena or nor from the biology arena. I'm coming from the physics and from the nanotechnology. And when I was looking at this problem of how to uh, uh, detect uh, COVID-19 carriers, uh, I said, well, we have uh, viruses, viruses, the size of the viruses are around 100 nanometer. So they are just like the nanoparticle that I'm using on the daily basis. And on top of it, probably there are a lot of uh, cell fragment and uh, a lot of proteins that are exhaled during the, the breath test uh, that are also in the order of uh, nanoscale. So I know from my background, how to measure uh, particles which are on the nanoscale. So I said, let's apply a method that are coming from physics in order to test the existence of this biological uh, 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 species. And, uh, and uh, of course, you can do it in different way. You can uh, take swab, for example, and take the swab and put it on, the, on our device. I will explain what is our device. Uh, but we figure out that if you want to do a very rapid test, uh, namely at the point of entries, uh, point of entries of, let's say, synagogue or airports or a stadium or any, any place that you want really to clear the people from having uh, COVID-19, uh, then it has to be very, very fast. You don't have time to take swab and then to transfer it to a test tube and things like that. You have to do it on a, on a fly. And the only way to do it is uh, using a breathalyzer because this is the direct, uh, the direct way to exhale anything which is in your lung. And we know that this virus, unfortunately, uh, is in our lung, uh, lung and, uh, and basically we want really to see it. So the, the, the measurement itself, it's a, it's a measurement that is coming from the physics uh, area. Uh, we are measuring uh, the, the existence of the virus and the existence of the, any fragment that is coming from the lung uh, 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 based on their uh, uh, material, uh, material science property. Namely, we are measuring their, uh, what we call the dielectric constant. We are measuring their size. 
And this combination of uh, size and dielectric constant basically make change on the device that we did on electronic chip. What we design on, on the chip is an array of thousands of thousands of thousands of micro antenna. Uh, each of these antenna resonance in a very precise frequency. And once these biological uh, fragments are uh, absorbed on the surface of those antenna, it's, alt it's alter the resonance frequency of, of this, uh, of this uh, antenna array to a frequency, to a new frequency. And what we are measuring actually is we are taking this chip and we put it in a spectrometer that basically uh, see what was the shift compared to the original resonance frequency. And this uh, shift of frequency basically defined very well the coronavirus carriers. And that's something that we found out uh, throughout the clinical trials. Now, is that, I'm fascinated by this. It sounds like- the yeah, I'm sorry if it was too much uh, technical. No, but... no, I'm, I'm, I'm a total geek and I, and I love this. Um, so it sounds like you've identified that the coronavirus has a unique signature, unique frequency fingerprint almost, yeah. and you can sort that from other viruses that somebody might expel in their breath? Not necessarily, not at the moment. Right now, what we, we, what we are saying with is that we have a screening system because you have to understand all this research is a three months old research. So we didn't have the time to go and scan influenza virus or any other, uh, any other virus. We didn't have the time and the capacity to do it. You know, I'm working with two master degree students and that's it. So, <laughs> that's just three of you. <laughs> right. That's so, <laughs> so, and, and with no budget. <laughs> right, that's, that's Israel and a Jewish organization, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, university, you know. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we, we, you know, we, we did it every day. We, we got some friends and family volunteers that really helped us in order to accomplish our goal. For example, we, uh, we printed the, the breathalyzer using 3D printing mm -hmm. and didn't have the budget to do it. So one of my friends offered, okay, I will do it for you, no problem. I'm volunteering, no problem. <laughs> I have nothing to do right now. Nobody ordered for me anything. So I'm going to do it for you. So this kind you know, it's, it's Israel. This is the way it's working. So, uh, so using a lot of help from, uh, from friends and family, uh, we, we, we demonstrate uh, and we went to the, to the clinical trials. And who helped us in the clinical trial is the Israeli equity. They took us, they saw the potential, and they said, we will help you to get to the, to the patients. Uh, actually, the first clinical trial were on Israeli soldiers that were in quarantine. They're all diagnosed with the COVID-19 and they were in a special place in Ashkelon at that time. Very nice place, by the way. And uh, we uh, went and test and test them, uh, 120 of them. And, um, and we, uh, about 40% were uh, COVID-19 carriers and the rest were healthy. And then we learned what is the signature of the COVID-19 carriers. And we have implemented those signature on on other individual, and we saw that it's really working. It's really very nice to see it. So tell us about the reliability then, because I know from the articles that I've read, you have a greater than 90% uh, accuracy with your test, which is right. In order to understand the PCR test, which is 70 or 80%. Yeah, exactly. So, so right now we, we consider the, for, only for this uh, clinical trial, we consider the PCR to be the gold standard, namely it is 100% accurate, although we know that it is not, okay? But we, we need a point of reference, otherwise we don't have any point of reference. So uh, the, the way that the clinical trials were done uh, is uh, that uh, from the, any individual, we took the breathalyzer test, and in parallel, we took the, the PCR test, the swab PCR test, and we gave our result within, you know, one hour, two hours, because uh, we just had to go to the lab to measure it in the spectrometer to see the frequency shift, and then we could uh, know exactly if it has the unique signature of COVID-19 carriers or no. Uh, the PCR, of course, took some, some more time. Sometimes it took one day, sometimes two days, sometimes even three days. And uh, we gave our results blind. We didn't know what are the result of the PCR. 
And then after uh, one, two, or three days, we got the, the PCR test results, and we compare uh, our result to the PCR test results. Uh, and, uh, and we got uh, more than 90% uh, accuracy uh, agreement with the PCR results, okay? Uh, as for 10%, we don't know who is right. Maybe we are right and the PCR is wrong or maybe other way around, so we don't know. But uh, there are several anecdotes that I must uh, mention. Uh, one anecdote is that uh, for, one, for one of the individual, we said positive and the PCR said negative. So we said, okay, we fail, okay? And then, from some reason that we don't know, they did another, on the same individual, another PCR test, and it was found positive, actually. So exactly what we said before. So we got a lot of confidence from this, that maybe we, we can do better. Uh, another anecdote is that in one of the, of the cycles that we did, uh, we uh, checked something like uh, 12 or, 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 yeah, I think 12 soldiers. Uh, we didn't know because we were not taking the actual test. There were special uh, people who are, you know, covered themselves and they are protected to take the test. Uh, and then we got results which shows us that it's not the usual signature as we know. And we, and we, and we said, okay, look, it's very, we got a very weird results. What is the weird results? We got results which are just between healthy and sick uh, with COVID-19, just in, the, in, in between. More, more tendency to the sick, but it's not really sick, but it's not really healthy. And we didn't get it before. And so they said, okay, let us check. They came to us about after 30 minutes and said, you know what, today, they took the test from the yellow camp. I said, what is the yellow camp? And they said, the yellow camp is a camp of those soldiers who are in the recovery, the last stage of the recovery. And then we realized that maybe our test can see also people who are really in, on the recovery stage. But this is not as important as by symmetry. By symmetry, if you can see people who are in the last stage of the recovery stage, maybe, I don't claim it right now, but maybe we will be able to see people who just started uh, to, uh, the, the, the COVID-19. Uh, and maybe by symmetry, we, we, we can say, maybe we can also see people who were only just affected, infected, namely maybe three hours, four, four hours, five hours after they were infected. Maybe, but we don't have a real proof for this, but uh, there is a reason to believe. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. I, I, am, uh, I am so blown away and impressed by the ingenuity and the resourcefulness that, that, that you and your team are bringing to this and, and really that, that Israel has brought to so many things, you know, in the startup nation mode. Do you think that there is anything unique about Israel which enables such a small country to develop such a groundbreaking and revolutionary, I mean, technologies in general, but medical technology such as your test in particular? I think I think that the people in Israel. I think that it's all over the world, but in Israel, it's more more emphasized. I must say that people uh, really uh, feel the, the the sense of necessity. Namely, uh, there is a need. People understand the need, and people, you know, try to come with solution from their fields. I, I believe that people who are coming from the biology field will come with solution from biology. I'm simply working on a daily basis with nanotechnology and, and physics and electrical engineering. So I came with solution from this field. Uh, so I, and, and second thing is that the country is not la, uh, you know, large enough. Uh, I'm saying it on the, on the negative connotation because if the country is too large, okay, too large, so you are start to losing the the connectivity between the people. You start to lose the net, the nice networking that you know this and you know this and you can get help and so on. I think that Israel today, uh, when the population is somewhere between 8 million, 9 million, this is an optimal, optimal population. To, in one hand, you have the critical mass of having enough people and enough ingenuity in the country in order to do a lot of things, but it's still small enough in order to have this nice networking of a small country that everybody knows everybody, people share with me the Air Force, I was in the Air Force, so I'm getting help from, from 
people that were served with me 30 years ago in, in the Air Force. It's, it's amazing because we are still in contact. You, you, you don't see it in many, many places in the world. So here's the, the I don't know, the, the billion dollar question perhaps, which is when, so you finished phase one of 120 or so uh, human trials, what's the next step? And when do you think if all of these things continue to be positive, um, when you'll be able to roll this out at scale and, and people in Israel and around the world will be able to use your test? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, right now, we, we were asked to do another 120 of a heterogeneous population because uh, the, the first 120 were on a quite homogeneous population of soldier uh, with the age between 18 and 23. Uh, so we did it. We already did it. We gave our blind results and we are waiting you know, every day for the PCR test in order to compare. And then the, our uh, clinical trial will increase or will double from 120 to 240. Uh, but of course, uh, in order to uh, go to the market and provide this test for the entire population, we have to go through the regulatory process. Uh, fortunately, there is now emergency track of the FDA and uh, also with the in the uh, EA, EUA, uh, we, uh, and uh, we, are in we, we are right now in a process of establishing a company uh, that will basically take this invention and uh, commercialize it. And this company will uh, basically approach the FDA, uh, the European Authority, and other places in order to grant the approval for this uh, test. Uh, this process usually take years. I hope that in this case, it will take us two months, at the most three months, and we will get at least the certification to go and start to sell it in the market. Uh, once we will do it, we will be able to give the, this benefit to the, to the entire uh, population around the world. Uh, because uh, imagine that you are going to the airport and you are clearing with this system within uh, 15 seconds, and you can go on your flight, uh, you want to go to school, you want to go to the synagogue, in every place where, where there are a lot of gathering of people, they will be able, we will be able to clear them to some extent, of course. Uh, we don't say that we are 100% correct, but to some extent, and to give more comfort to the people that they can go on the flight, they can go on the ship, they can go to the stadium, and they can go to the cinema as well. Gabi, thank you so much for your time and for your incredible work. I think that uh, our congregation and, and, and our, the Jewish community worldwide, and I hope the, the world community, uh, sits back in awe of, of the ingenuity and the work that you're doing with just two master's students and yourself. Uh, but, you know, some of the greatest computer companies in the world were started in somebody's garage. So this is the Israeli version of starting a company in the garage, I guess, which I know happens all the time. Uh, we wish you and your team and uh, to everybody uh, in your family that they should have uh, good health and, and much success in, in what you're doing. Thank you, Gabi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 David, thank you as well. Thank you.